Hey everyone, welcome to another Chem Complete session. And in today's lecture, we're going to tackle another round of aromatic, anti aromatic, or non aromatic classification. So these videos tend to be very popular. We're going to continue this series to get you guys as much practice as possible. So, as a brief review, the first rule for aromaticity is that you must have a cyclic system. So we have to have some sort of a ring system. The second criteria is that you have to have full conjugation and it also has to be flat. So full conjugation means we should be able to find a P orbital at every single node around the ring and it should be participating in some type of conjugation. And then the last one is Huckel's rule and for Huckel's rule we have the uh, 4n plus 2 equals pi electrons and when we solve for this we plug in the pi electrons and n must equal a whole integer such as 0 1 2 etc and again the reasoning behind that is because we have uh, basically when you look at molecular orbital theory you have non-bonding and anti-bonding regions and anytime n is coming up as a fraction such as one half or three halves uh, you're violating the bonding rules by going into non-bonding and anti-bonding regions it's not good to have electrons in those regions so let's go ahead and take a look here the first two examples for the first one we do have something that is cyclic so we can check off benchmark one number two does it have full conjugation well certainly any point involved in a double bond here is going to be involved in a p orbital and conjugation now the question is we have a lone pair up here on a carbon so we actually have a carbon ion and is that going to be part of the conjugation so yes this is similar to when you would have something like a hetero hetero atom like a nitrogen involved in the ring and its set of electrons can participate if it's going to be included in the conjugation and so we can include this set right here as being inside a p orbital that will continue the conjugation so this is a particularly stable anion because of the resonance stability here and when we take a look at it if we go for number two we meet the criteria of full conjugation so then the question is do we meet Huckel's rule so for number three we have 4n plus 2 in this case is going to equal 6 pi electrons and that's 2 pi electrons for each double bond and then the lone pair will also count as 2 because it will be involved in the conjugated system so it will be part of the pi electron system so you do some quick math subtract 2 from each side you get 4n equals 4 so n equals 1 we have a whole integer this is an aromatic compound All right number two this is interesting we have a dication here so to start we are certainly cyclic we have a four membered ring system number two is it conjugated well carbocations are always in empty p orbitals and they are waiting for electrons to come and fill up those p orbitals so because of that and we also have a double bond on the adjacent side we do meet the criteria for conjugation at every node around the ring and then finally again checking Huckel's rule number three we go for 4n plus 2 now in this case the cations do not contribute any pi electrons so we only get the electrons from the double bond so subtract 2 from each side you get 4n equals 0 so if you divide by 4 you just get n equals 0 this would also be perhaps a bizarre one but nonetheless this would be an aromatic system all right now for 3 and 4 so for number 3 we're going to take a look it is certainly cyclic so we passed the first one is it conjugated at each point well we've got double bond double bond a nitrogen with a lone pair that can contribute to the conjugation so that's fine the double bond the double bond but we have a problem right here this is an sp3 hybridized carbon 
and it does not participate in any type of conjugated behavior around the ring. So this is actually going to be in violation of rule two, and because we fail conjugation, that's going to make this non-aromatic. So we're about halfway through here, because there's a total of six examples. And at this point, I want to just briefly mention, if you head over to chemcomplete.com and you go to the guide section up in the menu bar, and I'll have a link for this in the description. We now have a conjugation practice guide. There are 48 practice problems, just like we're doing in these video lectures. It's only $5 for the guide. It has a full answer key, and you will get tons and tons of practice on ranking aromatic systems, non-aromatic, and anti-aromatic systems. So go over to ChemComplete and check it out. It's only five bucks and it does help support the channel so we can keep bringing you guys these free walkthroughs. All right, so back to our system here, number four. With number four, it is certainly a cyclic system. So we pass the first benchmark. Again, remember your carbocations are found in p orbitals. So number two would also be passed due to all the double bonds and then the one cation. Okay, and number three, so when you take a look at this, 4n plus 2 equals, it's going to be 6. And we know that 6, just like benzene, is one of the common ones that always works out. So 4n equals 4, n equals 1. We once again have an aromatic system. Now, let's take a look at these last two. So number one, is this cyclic? Yes, absolutely. Number two, do we violate conjugation anywhere? Well, we know we've got the double bond set. The question is, what about this up here? And a lot of students will get confused by this, and they'll think that this is a break in conjugation. But remember, when you have a carbon involved in a double bond, okay, you are going to stay conjugated. So this is a conjugated point because this carbon, while it is double bonded to an atom outside of the ring, this is still a carbon double bond right here, which means it has to have a p orbital in order to participate in that double bond. So this will have conjugation all the way around the ring. Now, does it pass Huckel's rule? 4n plus 2 equals what in this case? Well, we've got 2 per double bond. Now, these are only the double bonds inside the ring that are going to count. So this one, for the ketone portion, because this is outside of the ring, these pi electrons are not contributing to the conjugation itself, even though there is a p orbital there to keep conjugation in place. These pi electrons cannot readily participate in that system. To the same degree. So when you solve this one, it would really only be four pi electrons that come from the two double bonds inside the ring. Minus two for each one, you get 4n equals two. So n is going to equal two over four or one half. This is a case where we would have an anti aromatic compound because we violate Huckel's rule while we have the others in place. So remember, for non-aromatic, if it's going to violate either cyclic or the conjugation flat planar rule, that's going to be non-aromatic. For anti-aromatic, you pass the first two and you can only fail Huckel's rule. That's what makes something anti-aromatic. So for the last system, this is getting pretty large here. Is it cyclic? Yes, it is cyclic. We can see it's a bit bizarre. We've got a three fused ring system here, but it's all cyclic completely. Number two, do we break conjugation anywhere? Well, it's pretty easy to see. We have double bond, single bond, double bond, and it goes like this all the way around. So any point that you can find is going to be involved in a double bond. And because of that, we know that the conjugation must be intact here. So again, we're down just to checking Huckel's rule. So it's going to be 4n plus 2 equals, and it's 2 pi electrons per double bond. So we've got 2, 4, 6 on the left side, and then 8, 10, 12 on the right side. So a total of 12 pi electrons. Take 2 from each side, you get 4n equals 
10. So that means that n is going to be 10 over 4 or 5 halves. And so again, these last two are both examples of anti-aromatic compounds. So hopefully you guys found this walkthrough helpful just like the others. If you leave comments or have questions, I'm happy to interact. Uh, I do take requests if people have any ideas. Um, as always, if you found the video helpful, liking and subscribing to the channel helps. And again, head on over to Chem Complete. We don't just have guides for sale. We also have a free resource section that you can go to. All you have to do is sign up and you have access to a bunch of free guides and resources that I've put together. So hopefully everybody can head over to chemcomplete.com and I will see you guys for future lectures. Thanks for learning with us.